Thank you, and thanks, Ben. Uh, thanks, guys, for spending the next uh, 30 minutes with me. But uh, I'm glad you're here for the book review of Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, I'm glad you all could make it. Um, and if that's not of interest, we can uh, jump to something else. Um, I had the option of talking about uh, what I do for a living, which is basically minimum viable product and digital roadmaps and innovation, and I'll sprinkle it in. But I thought, um, so it was between that and then a personal story, like from way back and up till now. And I have 30 minutes to do it, so I figured that would probably be a little bit more valuable because if I look back now, I would wish I had more people I could say, these are the three things you should try to focus on. And a roadmap and MVP you can learn from anyone. There's a lot of people that are good at it. Um, so, because it's me, you would be screwed either way. <laughs> so, I did an executive decision and focus on my story. But I want you to know, um, here is a Facebook post from six days ago only from a general manager from Aon Insurance. If you're familiar with Aon Insurance, uh, it's a big insurance company, and being a general manager for North America is probably a good title. And I played soccer with this guy, David Whiteman, and here's what he posted. So, so there are some things that you don't necessarily learn in college that may be important later in life, right? So I want to uh, sprinkle in some bits and pieces of that as we go through this. So, lesson number one, everyone keeps talking about being authentic. I'm sure you've heard it. How do you do that? So if I stood up here and said, here's MVP and here's how you do a roadmap and make it cool, make it blue, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's not really being authentic, you know, necessarily. So, again, that's why I want to share a little bit of my personal story. So if during the next few minutes, half of you decide to leave the room because it's not interesting, I'm not going to be insulted, all right? And the reason is, um, here's my resume. Um, so, I was a bouncer. Um, so, again, you can't insult me. It ain't gonna happen, right? So, um, I just happened to grow up in that environment. I grew up in Norway. Um, my dad died when I was young, so I really didn't have a, a role model per se. So I quickly ended up in street fights. I got good at it. Um, and unfortunately, so by the time I was 17, 18, I probably had 100 plus fights. So I'm not here to prom promote fighting, okay? I'm just saying that's how I grew up. So when I was 18, I became a bouncer. Um, and I did a, you guys know what NDE is? Near death experience? <laughs> I had no idea who this guy was. He came up to me with a knife in his hands, drunk, and swung it at me. Took him out, I was 18, I had no idea who it was. It was a Russian mafia boss, okay? <clears throat> so, within 30 seconds, I realized that because I had three black Mercedes pull up with guns pointing at me. So, <clears throat> I wasn't really, um, uh, I was pretty nervous at that point. Two weeks later, the guy came up again, and he said, he came up to me, like within five inches of my face. And he said, do you realize that no one has ever done this ever to me? And I was like, I, I think I peed in my pants. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, so, so I said, but I have a job offer. I want you to work for me. I was like, no, thank you. But if you want to go inside and have a beer, and then I peed some more, I think, <laughs> then go ahead. And he goes, I appreciate that, and I respect that. So. That turned into a job offer, guys. Just letting me know. All right? All right? So, uh, another one was I, I used to race motorcycles. I ran into an RV at unbelievable speed. I lost um, full sight on my left eye for almost a year. Eventually, I came back. Um, then I, had a, I played a lot of soccer. Uh, so, I ended up with a scholarship, University of uh, San Diego, and then eventually, University of Hawaii. Spent some time in Asia, and I'll go through some of that. Um, did my MBA, ended up in Silicon Valley, and I can say no onions in 22 languages because I hate it. <laughs> Not languages, I hate onions. Um, so I ride motorcycles, um, you know, and uh, sometimes I ride with friends, 2,000 of them. 
Um, this is for autism. Um, so one of the lessons is to give back. Whatever you do, give back. Um, so we've done tons of autism rides, um, raised millions of money, and uh, just happened to do it via motorcycle. Um, this is back on my farm where I grew up. Um, this is, um, I spent one semester in Asia, Japan, Thailand, Hong Kong, Korea, and uh, we got to go and meet and greet with a lot of the CEOs for companies that were in those different countries. So it was a fantastic program at University of Hawaii. Um, and then um, this is my cousin, I guess just to show that, I guess being a Viking, kind of have it in the blood to travel, right? So, um, so I've been spending every dollar I made since I was a little critter on travel. Started early with soccer, 11, 12 years old, we got to go to other European countries, and then I just started making money, we spent it all. My buddy and I, as soon as we made, Five hundred bucks. We're like, can we go to a pizza for like twenty-four hours? Yes. Okay, go. Like, that wasn't even a decision. So, um, so this is Glenn, my cousin. Um, you know, uh, we do stupid stuff like wrestle with lions, um, riding motorcycle through Colombia, and then you get caught um, by terrorists. Um, so, so this is in Hong Kong when I was there. So. Um, I had a day off, right, because we were actually studying while living in Asia. So we had a day off, and on my day off, I just, you know, explored Hong Kong, right? So met a bunch of kids, played a little soccer with them, right, teaching them how, and then eventually spent half an afternoon teaching them English, right? From a Norwegian, isn't it? <laughs> so they had no idea. They probably still don't know. Um, but the point is, the next week, we were at the Hong Kong import-export company, which was the Google of Hong Kong at the time, um, and the general manager, he heard about it. So he was like, hey, I heard you guys, you were spending some time with the kids, why don't you come on and have dinner with my family tonight? I don't know about you, but if good karma just happens when you do good things, right? I'm telling you, do good things and things will fall into place. So don't ever question karma. And do you know that when you volunteer, you have a 27% 27.1% higher chance of getting hired. If I'm looking for someone, I'm going through a resume, have you volunteered? If not, next. <coughs> Do that. Um, I can bangra with the best, okay? <laughs> I really can, whether it's Punjabi or Hindi, tee it up. Okay, this is my accountant, okay? <laughs> All right, just letting you know. That's who I hang with. Okay, um, so since we're halfway to India, um, again, I, I go every occasion I have. Um, so I happened to go to Taj Mahal, um, and then good karma, right? The guy was gonna bike me back because it was a two mile uphill climb. Uh, you can't drive toward, you know, within two miles of Taj Mahal, you have to walk or take these um, rickshaws, right? So I was like, dude, you can't even pedal. Like, you know, I'm 240 pounds, you can't even move me. So I, I said, why don't you sit in the back, I'll still pay you, let me just paddle, I need the exercise. So, so this guy stopped and he goes, man, every one of them were clapping and laughing. So they were like, why don't you come for dinner here over here? So I was, all right, cool. And then the owner of the restaurant goes, why don't you come to the wedding, like in two days? We have a huge wedding. <laughs> I'm telling you, don't question karma, do not. Okay? So in Germany, right, um, went uh, racing, I don't know if you guys, any one of you know Nuremberg Ring? That's where everyone goes if you want to test your car, right? Because if it's tested in Germany, it must be good, yeah. <laughs> right? So, um, so then you get to experience stuff like going 300 kilometers an hour, 190 or so, uh, which is not for everyone. Again, I'm not promoting speed or motorcycles or use of guns or anything that you may see on the next few slides. <laughs> it just happens to be what I got involved with and what my interests are, all right? So, um, traveling, again, I don't know if you guys recognize this. What is it? Is it in Turkey? Jerusalem. Very nice, very nice, Ben. Um, so, this is uh, the only place where you have Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all working and assembling in the same shrine, right? Um, 
So it's very, uh, uh, I'm not religious, um, but it's, it's very powerful to have been there. It really is. Um, this is the Wailing Wall where you go and insert. Um, that's me. It's not obvious. Um, uh, insert a, a wish. So some of these are with my camera, which is way back when, so pretty poor camera. Um, but uh, and it's true, right? It is kind of cool to to read a paper while you're taking a, a bath, you know. So um, and then uh, Vietnam, um, Ho Chi. Anyone familiar with the Vietnam War? If you studied that, uh, this is basically the city they built underground. So you would crawl in and hide during the day, and at night they would pop up and shoot and kill Americans. So this is in Ho Chi. Anyone recognize this? Very nice. Brazil, Sao Paulo. Um, anyone recognize this? Yes, what's it called? Burj Al Arab, very nice. Um, so we were there, and uh, again, good karma. Uh, we were there pitching software um, for a distributor, and we're all like, man, that is one cool hotel, right? So. Again, just ran into someone and said, yeah, well, we're from the holding company. Um, and we're like, well, that's been a dream, dream to even go there. And they're like, well, would you like to have your next meeting? And we're like, okay, we can do that. So we had a meeting in the boardroom of the Burj Al Arab and restaurant after. Um, so the whole point of this, uh, the last few slides were travel if you can, all right? And getting trashed in at Dewey Beach does not count, okay? <laughs> it doesn't, okay? I'm talking about if you have an opportunity to go somewhere, please do. I'm not talking about spending your life savings. I did. I really did because that was just seemed normal to me. Like, yeah, of course, every dollar I make, I'm going to travel. If you have other responsibilities, please do not do that, okay? <laughs> um, but if you can... Uh, I strongly encourage it. Um, okay, Matterhorn. Again, if you recognize I ride motorcycles, I think four wheels does move the body, but two wheels move the soul. <laughs> okay, so two years ago, went to the Alps. I was just talking to someone here, right, about the motorcycle trip to the Alps. Um, so for 10 days, we just tore up the Alps. Um, and uh, you know, if you, if you don't have a big grin before you go there, you will have it after. Um, but for some reason, the picture, this picture seems better without me, and I, it's always, it annoys me, you know, but it looks a lot better without me. Um, so, um, okay, I'm not promoting guns, okay? I happen to grow up with it on a farm, and I happen to compete in biathlon and long distance shooting, so I grew up with it as a little critter, okay? Um, Therefore, I enjoy it, okay? Um, and it just happened to be that um, there's a lot of people that do. I am for, um, I'm for um, any gun control. I really am. I just enjoy the act of shooting competitively, whether it's target or clay or whatever it is. So this is where I brought the CEO, COO, CIO, every C you can mention, right? And we got to go. My best buddy, the Black Viking, Anthony Easterling, um, he's there. And uh, so he took us to, uh, to the range. We got to shoot with a SWAT team. Um, and I guess the end of it is last weekend, um, I got invited with the IBM uh, partner, consulting, executive team from New York to go play shooting with them just because I happen to like shoot, you know. So, so I think there are opportunities opening up depending on whatever hobby you choose to do, okay? Um, I happen to be very interested in it. So I took an anti-terrorist class for a week. You get to shoot through windshields, you know, at night, etc. All the stuff you need on a daily basis. <laughs> um, so, so basically, um, I have three hobbies, right? Motorcycling, I like watches, um, and I like guns. Um, you choose your own hobby, right? If you want to copy mine, great. <laughs> uh, but if you can choose your own, whatever it is, 
you know, planting beans in your backyard, okay? <laughs> Whatever it is, get passionate about it, right? I've been to the Ducati factory, I've been to several motorcycle factories because I like it. I've been to Panerai watch factory in Florence, right? I've been to gun factories because I like it, right? And it helps me in my business because I learn a lot from my passions. This, I learn about color and design. This, I learn about simplicity. And this, accessibility. And I, in the next session, I can spend some more time on it. <laughs> so, it was late at night, so obviously I missed the U, right? You know it's supposed to be, get a fun hobby, right? <laughs> right? So, that's a life lesson, okay? Um, listen, no sound, it's cool. Um, there you go. Up till now, you'd probably say, you know what, that's all fun. This guy is just talking about traveling. I need money to do it, right? Um, but I'm telling you, life has its downs too, right? So it's not just all glory. Whether it's financial or social or from a health perspective, right? Life can, you know, give you a beating. I've experienced all three. I made money and I'm throwing it all away. Socially, I'm divorced. Two kids, 50 plus. It's a, it's a dream, right? That's <laughs> you, look, you look next to you. Okay, in 25 years, one of you will be divorced, 50% divorce rate. Okay, that's just a fact. So, socially, that can be devastating, right? And it is devastating. But financially and socially, I think you can overcome it, right? You really can, because financially you can rebuild it, socially you can too, right? But then from a health perspective, that's a little harder, right? Because if you get stuck with something, that can be life-threatening, that may last your lifetime, right? So, take care of yourself. I just broke my toes playing soccer again. Unbelievable. Um, but, um, let me see, three years ago, um, I figured I like outdoors. I like um, hiking. So I figured, what the hell, I'll go to Mount Everest. Seems like a nice hill to climb. So I bought tickets, planned it, right, um, and everything was good. I was all set to go, <coughs> raised money, applied for Guinness Book of World Record because I wanted to hit the, the longest golf shot in history. Uh, so I was, you know, I was planning this whole thing. Um, and then um, went to the doctor, he came back, my personal doctor said, you know what, everything's good, you're good to go, but there's an irregular heartbeat, so just, let's just go and check it out. So I did. Um, you know, a couple of weeks later, um, he, he came right out and he said, if you're going to Mount Everest, you're not coming back. You will die at 8,000 feet. So, someone has played soccer my whole life, I've worked out my whole life, it may not show, but I actually have. Um, so to be told that, you know what, you know, your heart is in shitty shape. Only 25% of your heart is working. So people like you, they sit in the sofa with an oxygen tank next to you. So I'm telling you, take care of your health. So I have to install a battery pack, defibrillator. The good news is I can't die. If I pass out, this battery pack is going to kick in and I'm just going to keep on going. So life is good. <laughs> So, um, what I did was, you know what, I still like to do something with mountains. I don't know about you, but isn't that, isn't it interesting? I don't know what it is, yeah. but, right? Yeah. Something. Um, so, I said, you know what, the doctors, they only know so much. <laughs> so, um, I did a high altitude test. I did everything, changed my diet, stopped drinking, you know, I was like, you know what, I, I got to get better, right? You know, follow exact orders, and then um, took a high altitude test. My cardiologist said, you can go up to 8,000 feet, but no more. So of course I went to the Alps, rode a motorcycle at 11,000 feet, because I was never good at math. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, <clears throat> so, talk about health and life. So my cousin, um, he's an adventure motorcyclist. He rides around the world on a motorcycle. Uh, he got kidnapped in Colombia. And uh, life is pretty shitty when you have to dig your own grave every week. And they throw you in and they fire at you within inches of your head. They piss on you every day. Life is pretty crappy. So what he did was he said, you know what, I'm going to go on my timetable. I'm worth nothing to them dead. And I'm okay. So he went to the hunger strike and ended up in a Christmas truce with Red Cross where he was released after a while. So, um, so I'm telling you, life can give you a beating, but um, you got to persevere, right? And learn from it. And right now, he's a motivational speaker for BMW, right? And uh, we've had him at ING Direct, Capital One speaking. Um, so, so that leads us to probably why you're here. And you're like wondering, okay, so far, <laughs> this is kind of not business at all. Um, so, at ING Direct, um, I, uh, this is more the polished resume that you would see normally, right? So I just put it up there. Um, so, co-founded ING Direct, if you're familiar with it. Most of you are too young to know what it is, but um, it was probably the first successful digital bank around. Success as in lasting more than two years and then kept on growing up to $100 billion in assets. So I was one of the 12 guys that started that. Uh, <coughs> Three-piece suit, right? Everyone gets one. Um, so, um, you know, one of the highlights was we had a pretty good success with a mobile uh, app that we launched, that my team built. So we uh, we got to ring the the bell on the stock exchange. So it was kind of cool. Um, got a mobile patent, stuff like that. Okay, not mafia style. All right. <laughs> okay. Clarify. Collect people, as in. Whenever you meet someone interesting, keep their phone number, email, contact info, and make sure you network and keep it live. That personal network is going to be your lifeline for the rest of your life. I send out 1,300 emails regularly, okay? And now with email, it is a no-brainer, right? Remember their birthdays, what their wife or partner prefers, the age of their children, what they do. I'm telling you. It's going to pay off. Uh, obviously, for me, I had to do this because I am not one of these. So I had to surround myself with smart people. <laughs> so, uh, but it is a fact that you are the average of the five people you spend most time with. Think about it, right? You spend time with, take the five people you spend most time with. I will guarantee you that that's going to be a reflection of who you are and what you do. So keep that in mind. This is a very old Viking proverb from last night. <laughs> um, and it is, you kick anyone with a negative attitude to the curb. They are just a waste in your life. If a friend over time needs help, that's different. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about someone that's constantly yapping at you about how crappy things are. Okay, so this is what we do then, Digital Vikings. Uh, holy crap, five minutes. Um, so, um, again, uh, we are an innovation shop, Digital Vikings. So we like to innovate. What does that mean? I don't know, cool shit. <laughs> right? How you doing? Um, so we work with um, police, for example, on law enforcement, on Google Glass. Right? Um, there's lots of stuff you can do. We're proposing license plate lookup right now. Just scan the license plate because today I'm pulling over a car and I have to go down to my computer, <coughs> enter the license plate number, and I'll take my eyes off the price. Bad guy can come out and pop me. It happens. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. So now I can just scan the plate with the picture um, feature on the Google Glass or just use verbal command. Run license plate 211907 Delaware. Okay? And I can just keep my eyes. So that's one. Um, and then uh, we went to the shooting range. Can you imagine that? We actually went to the shooting range. Um, that was a tough decision. Um, 
and had the SWAT guys try Google Glass on just to see does it obtrude, you know, is it obtrusive when you, you know, use a pistol, shotgun, rifle, rocket launcher, etc. Um, so then in healthcare, um, sorry, I'm probably in your way. Um, I'll just have a. It's fine, it's fine. So I can't squat because my toes are. So, um, so anyway, for healthcare, something similar, right? We, um, we just got a contract yesterday uh, with a hospital to do uh, for ambulance drivers. So first responders, right? They're at the scene of the accident and they're like, hey, um, I'm video conferencing into a physician, right? Can you tell me, you know, should I put on a Band-Aid or amputate, you know? <laughs> okay, Band-Aid is good for now, all right? <laughs> okay, do that. So video conferencing um, is, a, is killer. So we're super stoked about uh, working on this. Then augmented reality, uh, it's kind of tough to show. Um, I'd rather demo it, so anyone later, if you want to come and see our office. Um, and then we just happen to be um, uh, involved with a project, Columbia University um, in New York. They just contacted us last week. They want us involved in, um, in something around Pico um, satellites. I don't know if you guys have heard it, so that's kind of interesting. Um, <coughs> I'll skip that. Our office. Um, this is my office. Um, <laughs> Would you go back to that? That was wonderful. Sure. I mean, who does not keep a motorcycle in your office? I mean, um, so uh, then we have a presentation room, which is obviously instead of a boardroom. Um, and then we added a 3D robotics lab, a couple of 3D printers and robotics, just because it's cool. Um, and then uh, how do you innovate? Um, you know, everyone's like, well, that's easy. You just innovate and subscribe to innovation.com and have someone come in and tell you what innovation is and you go home and do it. Well, one of the cheap ways of doing it is buy magazines in other industries. This is my stack, all right? This is my personal stack. I told you I'll be authentic and hear this. This is my stack of magazines. Copy it, but get your own, right? I like architecture after traveling. I really do, and now I appreciate it. Before I didn't, all right? So, um, I like art. I never thought I would. I really, I really didn't. Um, so, I don't know how this snuck in there. Anyone of you have any idea? <laughs> um, so, I like this sign for sure. Um, so, anyway, foreign affairs. Um, so, another lesson is, <clears throat> if you want something, ask for it, okay? You really should ask for it, okay? And if you want to give, say yes to every damn thing that people ask of you. It is amazing what happens. You guys watch the movie? Well, it's, it's yes, man. Right, in German. I just mixed it up a little. <laughs> the Ja <yes> Saga. <laughs> See? It is the yes, man, right? So, but example from this week, guys. Do you guys know who the DuPont family is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Ben DuPont. Okay. So on Monday, I, walked, I had coffee with him, and I asked him, I said, uh, my mentor just left, Arkady Pullman, the CEO of IMG Direct. Um, I'm looking for a new mentor. Um, would you be willing to do it? I'm low maintenance. We'll meet every six, seven weeks for coffee, lunch. He goes, absolutely. If, you, if I didn't ask, what would the answer be for the situation? No. So I'm not bragging. And that is not the idea. What I'm saying is just ask if you want something. The worst thing that happens is you get a no. Okay, and you get good at getting no's. The beauty of that is it doesn't impact you then later, right? I've gotten so many damn no's in my life, I have no idea. But it doesn't impact, it's like, hey, that's just a speed bump to yes. <laughs> right? So life lessons. All right. <laughs> So you get the idea. The idea is learn to dance, for Christ's sake. <laughs> what? How hard is that? I never learned how. I looked like an idiot on the dance floor until I was like 49. And then I just took salsa lessons last year. So, okay. And then the other one is learn how to cook a meal, all right? Okay, burning up a hot dog does not count. It really, it doesn't. Learn how to put together a meal, all right? Give an example. I did not know how to cook until four or five years ago. I, did, I really didn't. But I've always been into stretching myself and what I can do and my possibilities. So this is 
a dinner at my house for friends. Okay? Everyone gets their own personal menu. I go stretch, I have no idea how to make it, but I send out the menu two weeks before and then I figure out how. Google, how do I make lobster bisque? Okay? It's amazing what happens, it really is. So my challenge to you is, cook something for a friend of you over the next week. Just do it. Put a meal, okay? Not mac and cheese. A meal. Make sense? Okay. And how easy is this? And how cheap is it to say thank you? You'd be amazed how many people have come to my office, for example. We treat them to lunch, whatever. And there's like nothing. Not that I expect it, but the one thing I've learned by traveling is just say thank you. And I know how to say thank you in many languages because it is a very low investment for high return. Um, oops, I skipped them. Dang. Okay. All right. So, um, all right, this one. How hard is it to be a gentleman or gentlewoman or gentle partner? Okay? It isn't. Help that old lady across the street. All right? Open the damn door for someone. You'd be amazed how many doors you get slapped in your face, but if you just do it, it costs nothing. It costs half a second of your life and people notice, all right? When you're at the dinner table, wait for everyone to sit. What's wrong with saying bon appetit? As much as I don't like the French. <laughs> what's wrong with saying bon appetit, right? Okay, and... Okay, so in summary, I know we're running out of time. Uh, this is basically, I think, what I hit on during this presentation, but if you can take away two of these, and focus on them, you are well off, right? So, you guys get them, right? We talked about all that, right? Okay. Um, and then, what does all this get to you? Then you're like, okay, whatever, right? That sounds cool. I could have, I, I would have known that without listening to this guy speak over lunch and lunch. Sound? Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? Uh, genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's not too bad. <laughs> All right, so um, let me see. I gotta skip something. Okay, I know we're running out of time. All right, so listen, you know, you gotta be different, right? Um, oh, yeah, back to being different. Um, you know, on the manners, if you're ever at an interview, some of you will be soon, right? Here's a quick lesson for path to success. You're waiting for someone, order two glasses of water. Small thing, but you've thought of the other person if they're running late, okay? Do that. Just that little one move is gonna get you from here up to here. There may be a lot of competition here too, but at least you narrowed it down. Small thing goes a long way, all right? Cool. All right, so, um, sorry, take questions, hang out, uh, and then my offer to you is, since this was supposed to be all business, come to my office and I'll teach you how to do minimum viable product and how to create a killer roadmap if you want to. But it's happening at my office, all right? And just let me know, all right? That's my offer to you, okay? Thank you. <laughs>